So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll tell you about Pocket Mars by Board and Dice, a game of colonising Mars that fits in your pocket. So, what is the game and how does it work? Well, overall what this game comes down to is cube pushing. It's all just about moving cubes around. You see, your cubes represent colonists. And your main way of scoring points in this is by having your colonists moved from Earth, which is the main supply, to your ship, and then from your ship to one of the buildings on Mars, depending on the location in the building will depend on how many points. You'll get bonus points depending on which buildings your colonists are in and how many are in a building. So if you're in all the different buildings, you gain bonus points. If you've got four or more in a single building, you'll gain bonus points. Or is it three or more? Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, if you've got a certain number in a single building, you get bonus points. And you'll also get points at the end of the game for having the most energy. You get one point for that. And any of your kind of colonist cubes that are still on your ship at the end of the game will also score you a point. The game ends when one person has managed to get all seven of their colonists onto a building, on, onto buildings in Mars. So that is the game. How do you go about moving these cubes then? You've got the aim of the game. Well, it's all about using these cards. And you're going to have the cards in two places. Two cards in hand and two cards in your prep area. Now, your prep area is face down on the table. There are some card effects that will let people look at this. And they work slightly differently than the cards in your hand. Cards in your hand are very simple. Use the top ability from the card, which is there from your hand. On your turn, you can only do one action. And there are a few to choose from, including playing cards, just moving cubes etc but generally playing cards is what you're going to be doing at the end of every turn anyone who's short of four cards will draw up and put more in their prep area if they need to and you always always have two in each place when you play a card from your prep area you'll gain the effect that's on the bottom of the card that's your prep area power but also you play it to the color building of the card and you get the power from that building. So you're getting double power. And finally, there's numbers on these cards and there's numbers on the base. If the number on your card is greater than the last card played, and if there's no card, then greater than the base number, you're able to move one of your colonists from your ship to the building. And so, that, along with card powers and building powers, is how you're going to move your colonists around, as well as gain energy, some things you'll spend energy for, and you'll be able to look at cards, draw cards, the usual kind of deck manipulation effects, really. So, that is a brief summary of the game. What do I think of it? Well, unfortunately, this did fall slightly flat for me. Partly artwork-wise, there isn't really a whole lot of artwork. You've got a few symbols on the backs of these coloured cards, but not there's not really any art to speak of. And then the other side, you've got diagrams, which I suppose is an artistic choice. It's like blueprinty diagrams for buildings type look, but it's just very subtle, very doesn't really stand out it's not engaging interesting art i will say with regards to the graphic design the way they've laid out the hand and prep zone makes it very clear what's what the numbers on the cards are all very clear the abilities on the buildings what iconography there is is all very clear i like the spaceship pictures i like that they've got different names on them that are kind of homages to geek culture um, what I don't like is that they've used the same ship, just with a different name and a different colour. It would have been nicer to actually have a different image of a ship. Um, with regards to the building artwork, it's okay. Again, it's nothing special. 
component quality is actually very good for the price of game it's not an expensive game you don't get a huge amount it's deck of cards and a few cubes and tokens but what there is is good quality um what else is there to talk about so let's talk now about scaling on the game can to play that game yes it plays exactly the same really with two as opposed to with four i will say with four you've got slightly more interaction going on potentially of people using other people's cards because that's one thing i didn't mention in my description you can use anyone's prep zone cards but they gain the ability from their cards still you gain the building ability so it's not the most efficient means and that's kind of a, the big area that interaction comes from with this that and also that there's higher scoring areas on the buildings and only a certain number of cubes can be in there so that means there's a bit of a tug of war over scoring for the buildings at times um but yeah uh can two play that game vs4 yeah um, in many ways, I think probably the best number is three. At four, it can be a bit of an issue downtime wise between turns. At two, you've got less opportunities for interaction with regards to that tug of war aspect. So I definitely do think that uh, three is the best number for playing this. Um, with regards to replay value, the order with which the cards come out will affect that to some degree but often it does feel like the same game at the end of the day you're always doing the same thing of moving cubes there's not really different routes to victory here there's only one thing you can do which is move cubes move cubes move cubes and so that means from a replay value, it does get kind of old, kind of fast, which is a shame. Yes, your ability to move cubes will vary with the game and how you go about it, which buildings you get to go to. So that does pull it back a bit, but it could have done with a bit more going on with regards to ways to win the game, ways to play the game that give it a bit more variety and depth. Uh, which brings me to complexity. Now, with regards to the complexity of this game, it isn't a difficult game. I've quickly explained it there. There's not that much to go into. Um, the big problem with complexity is there's quite a lot of text on the cards. And each turn, you're looking and deciding between four cards. And each card has two options of where you could be playing it from. And that means you've got eight things to consider, as well as do I play other people's cards, as well as the powers on the buildings. It can be kind of overwhelming, especially for someone new to this game, and even for people who are used to playing the game. And this can interrupt the flow of the game quite a lot, meaning that it's like, right, uh, and I draw up, uh, can you just hold on while I decide what to do with this card? So, which do I want to put in? And that really drags the game on. So rather than it just being turn, 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 it's turn, draw, wait. Okay, turn. And that is kind of a shame as well to this game. But it can be a fun game if you don't mind the lack of interaction, if you don't mind the potential amount of text to read, if you're very quick with decision making, it's not going to be a game for people with analysis paralysis. It's going to be a light, quick game and it does play quickly. That is one very good thing about it. It will be over in about half an hour. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a deep, heavy game. It's a light game. As I say, I've not hugely enjoyed it. Um, I was quite, I was expecting more, I think is part of it, after playing other games of theirs. I think this is an okay game, but I'm unlikely to be keeping it in my own collection. That is Pocket Mars by Board and Dice. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.